Welcome to Amron's 10th annual Teotihuacan Readiness Exercise, T-Rex 2023. T-Rex is a nationwide scenario-based simulated grid down exercise where the greatest emphasis is placed on emergency radio communications. T-Rex 2023 will take place from Friday through Sunday, July 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. This year's hypothetical scenario will be based on a nationwide coordinated sabotage operation against our critical infrastructure carried out by saboteurs from the fictitious country Mauistan. The Mauistani saboteurs will have spent many months infiltrating the United States and Canada, exploiting weaknesses in our border enforcement policies. Targets may include power grid substations, fiber optic internet and telecommunications cables, our transportation infrastructure, including rail and possibly even our water and food supplies. What would you do if you suddenly found yourself without power, without cell phones and without internet? How would you stay informed? How would you know if this was a localized event or regional or involved multiple regions? How would you know if this was nationwide or more widespread? When power and communications goes down in the real world, whether during war or major disasters, the headlines always say that the people are hungry for food and information. T-Rex is a great opportunity to practice your personal emergency preparedness plan, whether for your own family, your local preparedness network, your organization, or your team. This is an exercise where you can join hundreds or thousands of others across the continent and beyond practicing your disaster plan at the same time as others, following along with the same scenario. Whether you practice bugging out, bugging in, or teaming up with others for a camping adventure, it's a time for you to practice using your off-grid power, cooking, filtering water, practicing with your communications gear, and finding out what works and what needs improvement. Feel free to make it a training weekend where you can also conduct first aid, land navigation, self-defense, emergency radio, scouting, intelligence gathering, and other classroom topics. You might want to develop smaller localized scenarios within the larger scenario, which enhance the overall experience and personalize the exercise to address challenges or other factors that would uniquely affect you if this were real. For example, do you live downstream from a dam? Is there a busy railroad known to carry hazardous materials nearby? Do you live near a high crime area? Do you live in an area prone to wildfires? Does your water supply come from a municipal reservoir which could become contaminated? It's up to you how you participate and to what degree. The more you take it seriously and the more you engage in the exercise, the more you'll get out of it. In the final weeks and days leading up to the exercise, keep checking the T-Rex page at Amron.com. There you'll find more resources to help prepare you for the exercise, as well as breaking news updates from WIWT News. These What If It Were True news segments are intended to add realism to the scenario and give you insight into just what the threat might be and provide answers as to why there might not be power in communications. Also, tune in and participate in the Amron practice nets over the radio prior to the exercise to make sure that your radio and other equipment are in working order, including software for the digital modes that news and information will be sent using. Go to Amron.com and click on the Scheduled Nets tab to find out more. At noon Pacific Time, 2300 hours Zulu, everyone simulates a grid down situation. No commercial power, no internet, no cell phones, nothing. We understand that many folks don't have emergency backup power yet, so you may need to keep freezers and other equipment plugged in. But this should also highlight areas you need to improve for a time when you may not have the option of leaving things powered on. Once the exercise officially begins, there will be no more help provided on the website or on any other grid up platform. This is Sink or Swim, and you're on your own until Sunday, noon Pacific, or 2300 hours Zulu. There will be multiple simulated emergencies which will transpire, which could have a direct impact on you depending on where you live. 
You won't know what kind of danger could be near you, or what routes might be closed or too hazardous to use, or the size and the scope and degree of various dangers, unless you have emergency communications. To find out what is happening, tune into the nets according to the schedule in the Amron Signals operating instructions. What you will learn from WIWT News is the only information you'll have up to the point that the grid goes down. After that, you'll only be able to stay informed using radio. At the onset of the exercise, two things will take place. First, net control stations, NCSs, will begin assessing the situation by soliciting status reports from those who have taken to the airwaves, even prior to a scheduled net. Stations who are licensed and capable of transmitting over HF should begin putting their stat reps together at the onset of a major grid down emergency and have them ready to pass along to others, especially to NCSs who are requesting them. Each station should keep his or her stat rep updated as their situation changes. Secondly, NCSs will also begin developing their IESs or initial event summaries prior to the upcoming scheduled net. This would take place using the persistent presence net which is continuously ongoing when there's not a scheduled directed net. The stat reps he receives from stations on the air should be factored into his IES. The IES is an initial report stating what is known about the event up to that moment as well as any other instructions for announcements, such as reminders of upcoming scheduled nets. The general perception of operators on the air is that the NCS is the one who has all the answers. Of course, the NCS may not know any more than anyone else. He is simply the one directing traffic and receiving a considerable amount of it. Nonetheless, the IES is a formatted report to convey what is known at the time and then updated as reports come in. Multiple stations across the country acting as volunteer initiating stations will inject messages, situation reports, news and information or other radio traffic throughout the exercise to enhance the scenario. The injected traffic will be pre-scripted and issued to the volunteer initiating station prior to the exercise to be injected at specific times. This helps to support the flow, the tempo, and the timeline of the scenario as it unfolds. Some of the other traffic you will see is welfare traffic. This is traffic where one station sends a message to check on the welfare status of a friend or loved one in an impacted area. All stations should be ready to assist in passing this and any other traffic when you encounter it when there is an obvious need for assistance. If able, you're encouraged to be an active participant and not just a passive observer. However, if you're not yet licensed to operate on the HF bands, or you're limited to using only a receiver, such as a shortwave radio receiver, then take advantage of the training scenario to practice receiving radio traffic to keep yourself, your family, or your group informed. Then you can act as a relay to pass the radio traffic to your local group. Situation reports and other information you receive and pass along will be the highlight for everyone participating. The overwhelming majority of the radio traffic sent will be done so using the digital mode software FL Digi and JS8 Call. The software is free to download and use and no license is required for receiving ham radio traffic. A license is only required if one is transmitting. For FL Digi, you'll also want to download FLMSG or FL Message, as well as the custom forms available at Amron.com. And you'll want to download the FLAMP or FLAMP software. For JS8 Call, you may also want to download the companion software program Comstat which visually displays status report data as well as provides a map of stations heard. For learning more about digital modes, type digital in the search box on the website. And to learn more about setting up the FL Digi suite of software, type in the search word FL Digi. You'll find several postings, including one which has multiple tutorial videos 
that will walk you through the download, setup, and use of the Fastlight Digital Mode software programs. There's more to come, so subscribe, like, and follow us here on this channel, and be sure to check the T-Rex 2023 page at Amron.com so you don't miss out on more details and information that will help you get the most out of Teotihuacan Readiness Exercise 2023.